Hey, what's going on everyone? This is iReviews back with another video and today I will show you guys how to boost any iPhone in 2024, especially older iPhones or if you have an iPhone that doesn't have the battery at its maximum capacity, basically under 80%, which means that the iPhone cannot perform at its maximum capacity, then you will need a few tips and tricks that will help you boost the speed of your iPhone and have your iPhone working as fast as it can. Now, first of all, one thing that you can do if you want to boost up the speed of your iPhone, and especially if you're like having any problems, any issues with any certain apps, it's clearing the RAM memory. Now, by far the easiest and the most efficient way that I have found to clear the RAM memory on iPhones is using the camera app. For some reason, the camera app, once it's launched, it will clear the RAM memory. So if we take a look here at this app, you can see it shows how much free RAM memory we have. Currently, there are 424 megabytes. Now, all I have to do is just open the camera app and once it's opened, I can just go ahead and close it right away. Now, when we go back here in a few seconds, you will see the increase there for a gig of free RAM memory. That's how easy it is and that's how easy you can do it without using any third party app. Another thing you can do is using a new option that Apple has added with iOS 17. Now head on to your settings, go under Xbuildy and then under touch right here. We will find here haptic touch. Now haptic touch is basically everywhere on iOS. Now if you use the default one, which will be the default preset on iOS, it's kind of slow. You can see every time you tap and hold something, it will take like a second to actually pop up. But what you can do with iOS 17 is choose the fast option and you can see how much faster that is. It will actually make a big change when using your iPhone on daily basis. Now, one thing that we all knew and we knew it the wrong way is that closing apps from the background will make our device faster. As you can see right here, I don't have any apps in the background. Just that's basically just the habit that I have. I always close out all the apps but that's the wrong way of using your iphone and this has also been confirmed by apple so what i suggest you do apps that you don't actually need a lot that maybe you use once a day or once a few in a few days you can close those apps but apps that you use daily like let's say your social media and all those daily apps that you use on your iphone don't close them from the app switcher leave them here that will of course make the iphone keep the apps there prepared to be launched anytime you need them because once i close this app then when i go to reopen it ios and the iphone will need to basically relaunch the app completely and if you have a slower and older iphone that will take quite a while Another thing you can do from the settings app is changing the animations of your iPhone. Again, when you have an older iPhone that is not that fast, this will help a lot. So here's how you do it. You go to your settings, go under Xability, then you will have motion here. Now what you can do here is enable reduce motion. This will basically reduce all the fancy animations that you have on your device, but of course it will make your device work a bit faster and a bit smoother. Now, when it comes to iPhone performance, especially on a daily basis, probably one of the most underrated things is rebooting your iPhone. Rebooting your iPhone will do a lot of good to your device. It will clear the cache a lot. It will, of course, clear the RAM memory. And overall, your device will be in a better shape and will work better. Now, if you have, again, a slower, older iPhone, I would suggest that you do this daily. Just reboot your iPhone. You can, of course, go to the general settings here and then shut down and, of course, just turn off your iPhone and then go ahead and boot it up. Or you can use volume up, volume down, then press and hold the side button until the iPhone reboots, until you see the Apple logo, and then you have done a forced restart of your iPhone, which is basically the best thing you can do to have your iPhone be much faster and basically have a fresh start. Now, one really interesting thing is that I've seen a lot of people use low power mode on their device a lot. Like I see people with low power mode turned on when their device is at maybe 40 or 50% battery. You have to know that it will have a huge, huge impact on the performance of your iPhone. Even on the newer devices right here, you can see how good and smooth this device is. Of course, it's a new device, but if you have 
the battery here turned on low power mode, you will notice that it will start working a bit slower, which is really crazy for a really new device. But what I suggest you do is that you don't use low power mode when you have maybe enough battery. I would suggest that you only turn on low power mode once your iPhone has dropped under 20% battery. Now, one of the things that your iPhone will need to perform as it should is free space. If you have always very low storage on your iPhone, that means that your iPhone won't be performing as good as it should. What I suggest you do, of course, you can just go to the general settings here and then go to the iPhone storage and right here we'll find everything regarding the storage. You will see what is taking up space on your iPhone. You will see all the apps here, all the different apps, your photos and all that stuff. What I suggest you do, delete whatever you can. Don't keep apps or don't keep long videos that you won't need in the future because they will take a ton of space, delete them from your device. And if you have apps that you have installed, let's say for like a couple of years, and they have accumulated a ton of data, like right here you can see Instagram, it's crazy. The app is 252 megabytes, while we have six gigs of storage that it has been saved right here documents and data what i suggest you do in this case in my case what i will do delete the app and then reinstall it of course this will come up again to this number right here to this size but it will take most likely at least a year until the documents and data come up to six gigs Next up, we're talking about backup and specifically iCloud backup. If you have iCloud backup turned on all the time, it will of course have an impact on the performance of your iPhone because there will be all the time data in the background uploading and backing up to iCloud. What I would suggest you do is turn this off and actually just use this manually. In maybe in a few weeks or a month or so, you can just go ahead and manually back up your device and have this feature actually turned off so it doesn't use just like CPU power all the time. That way, of course, slowing down your iPhone all the time. Maybe you won't even notice what is happening here, but backing up all the time in the background, of course, will cause the iPhone to work much, much slower. And then will be the location services. You go to the settings, privacy and security. Here we have location services. Now in my device, what I practice is that I keep location services turned off all the time. Only time that I will turn this on is when I need my location. If I need to navigate somewhere or if I just need to do something and I need my location, I will turn it on. Once I'm done, I turn it off back again because this has a huge impact on the battery and the performance of your iPhone. Or if you just don't want to turn it off or maybe you need it to be on all the time, make sure that you at least take a look at the list of apps here and just turn it off for some apps that don't actually need to have your location because once you have opened those apps, they will immediately start tracking your location and having a huge impact on battery and performance. And last but not least, something that a lot of people will actually overlook is updating your iPhone to the latest iOS version. You will see a ton of people all the time with very old iOS versions on their device. That shouldn't happen. Make sure you go to settings, general software update, and you always have the latest update installed on your device. That will of course install all the security fixes, all the bug fixes and everything else on your iPhone and will have of course a great impact on, on your iPhone having basically a better performance than with old iOS versions that don't include those bug fixes and those improvements. So that's pretty much it for this video guys. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, smash the like button. Of course, subscribe for more videos like this and I'll see you on the next one.